Hi everyone, is it the mask we are wearing for the protection from coronavirus that is killing us or is it the virus itself? Now so many people are asking that questions and so many people are having difficulty trying to figure it out. What is it? Is it the virus killing us? Is it the mask killing us? I'm going to be talking about that and answering that question and a lot more. I'll be right back. And welcome back to our YouTube channel. My name is Dr. D. Terrence Foster. If this is the first time that you're joining me, let me just extend to you a very warm welcome wherever you are in the world today. I just want to extend a very special welcome to you. And I want also for you to know that on this channel, we focus on simplifying medical issues for everyone, particularly those who may have felt left out. This is your channel. Consider subscribing. It is free and we produce a new video every week. So let us begin and talk about coronavirus. Now, I decided to do this video about coronavirus because after talking and listening to so many people, it is clear to me that so many people uh, need to understand more about coronavirus. Um, I believe that we as doctors or scientists, our healthcare providers, um, somehow we're not getting the message across as clearly as we should. So I'm gonna make an attempt today to try to see if I could help in that regard. Now, the second reason why I also decided to do this video is um, you probably have noticed that in so many countries and in so many, and even the same countries in different parts of, of a given country, there are so many infection and deaths that are continually rising the death rates and the infection rate is now much more significant than they were when we were in other peak period of the pandemic. In this video, I'm going to try to dispel some of those theories that are out there that are confusing people or that are probably factual in, in part. I uh, will be talking about them. So what has been happening in the world and why are we so concerned about coronavirus and its spread and mass and all of this. Well, if you've been paying attention, you'll know that about 42.5 million people have been infected by the coronavirus and 1.2 million people have died worldwide. In the United States, 8.7 million people have been infected and over uh, 230,000 people have died at the time of this recording. Now, also in the United States, um, in addition to the um, large number of infection and the increased number of deaths, um, hospital admission rate from coronavirus is up by about 40%. There's also an increase in the number of positive tests that have been recorded where the positivity rate is in some cases from 10 to 20%, which is uh, extremely high. Positive, positivity rate is simply the number of positive cases um, from a number of tests. So if you test 100 people and 10 of them are positive, the, positive, the positivity rate is 10%. But the uh, United States is not alone. If you look at what's happening in Spain, in France, Italy, and the UK, you'll notice that there is also an increase in the number of infection uh, from what it was in the previous um, surge of um, coronavirus infection. So this is global. This is not just located to one area of the country, to one place of the country, but it's affecting um, so many countries worldwide. Now, it's not uncommon to hear and to believe that this was preventable because there's so many other countries that have done well, for example, South Korea, China, Japan, New Zealand, to name a few. And we still see the numbers going up in the United States, for example, where uh, Today, on this recording, 82,000 people were infected and over 1,000 people died from uh, COVID-19. Now, um, the number keep going up and will increase even more once the full effect of the flu or the cold season takes effect, which is what we're heading into as the temperature gets colder, more people are indoor and more people are congregating. We're going to see an even larger number of uh, cases and death occurring. Now, I know where there's a fatigue factor and it's huge. We're all so sick of dealing with this coronavirus. 
it has impacted so many of us. We can't go to school, we can't go to church. Um, if you go to a bar, you can't go to a bar, you can't hang out with your friend. You can't even bury your loved ones who have died from, from this terrible disease. So we all want to get this behind us. We all want to get this out of our lives. And we're so wanted to not wear a mask, not do anything, because we believe it's going to go away. And fortunately, it doesn't work like that. Coronavirus is not, doesn't care. It's not taking any time off. It is still significant and it's still impacting all of us worldwide. Now, in the United States, about 50% of people are wearing masks and observing social distance. Now, but even with that, we have lost over 230,000 people at this point. Now, if we continue to do the same thing, we will lose about 400,000 people by February 1st, according to the Institute for Health Matrix and Evaluation at the University of Washington. So it means that we could still save some life if we decide to um, improve our social distance and improve uh, masks. In other words, if we adhere to um, wearing masks or more people adhere to wearing masks, then would expect that the numbers would, in, uh, would be better. In other words, less people would die by the time we get to the 1st of February uh, 2021. The, the other thing that is likely to happen uh, by February uh, 2021, if we stop doing all these, these things, these masks and social distance, etc., then we'd expect about 1 million people dying. Now, that is staggering if you think about it. That is indeed frightening. To most normal people, it is. Now, it's easy to agree and understand uh, that people have rights. So if they decide to wear a mask or a scarf or they decide not to, then it's their right and it's their responsibility. But what about those of us who decide that we, we want to live or we want to not um, be exposed to their virus or to their way of life. Do we have a right or do we have the responsibility? And that's something that we all should uh, be cognizant of because other people also have right and their right may not necessarily need to be impinged upon your so-called freedom as it is in, in some instances. Now, <clears throat> because of people wanting their rights and wanting their freedom and everybody wanting this thing to be over yesterday or gone away, there's so many conspiracy theories out there, so many things. Um, will, will masks kill you? Is it gonna kill you? What should you do if you wear masks? So let me, let me just see if I could break this down a little. And, and what I'm gonna say, I mean, and I, and I try to make this channel simple for everyone. You don't need a degree for this. You don't need even, you probably don't even need to have been to school or have a, any sort of formal education what I'm about to say regarding masks. So let's assume, for example, that I am spitting out, um, I have the, let's assume I have the coronavirus and I'm spitting out um, coronavirus, I'm seizing, I'm opening my mouth, I'm talking, I'm singing, I'm laughing. And all, those are ways that the coronavirus comes out of someone who has it. Um, whether you're, once you open your mouth, in, a, in whatever way you're talking, you're singing, you're laughing, um, you're coughing, you're sneezing, comes through your nose. That's some of the ways the coronavirus will go. Now, if some, if you're in front of somebody and they're, they're spitting out all of their virus right at you. Now, what if for, for one moment that person uh, covers their mouth or their nose and they can no longer spew that out right at you. Do you believe that you are going to be less likely to have their virus come in contact with you? Let's look at it another way. What if you, on the other hand, also are wearing a mask and that covers your nose and your mouth? Do you believe that those stuff that are coming at you have less chance of getting into your mouth, into your nose? And if you have a goggles or a glasses on, it also has less chance of getting in your eyes. The virus getting into one's mouth, one nose, or one's eyes are the primary ways that it will get into uh, and get into your respiratory system. So if you prevent your virus from getting into someone's, um, into someone's eyes, nose, or mouth, 
then you are helping to prevent the virus from spreading. Or if you have a barrier that prevents it from getting into you, you are protecting yourself. So wearing a mask protects you from spreading it to someone who may not be infected. And if you don't have the virus and you're wearing a mask, it's also protect you from getting infected. That is common sense. It doesn't take any... <laughs> it's, it is so simple. But yet still, people oppose this. And people, um, for whatever reason, they, 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 don't, they don't see this. They don't believe it. They don't get it. Now, so many people are saying they don't want to wear masks because masks is killing them and masks is a dangerous thing. And, you know, how do you breed all this carbon dioxide and all this stuff? But let me just remind you for some of those who may not or may have forgotten that, you know, in the medical profession, um, we healthcare providers have been wearing masks for eternity. You know, if you're a surgeon, you probably will be wearing your mask for anywhere from six to eight hours, sometime even uh, 10, 12 hours a day, nonstop, you will have that mask on. Not only will the, the surgeon have the mask on, but also other health care providers in the room where, let's say, an operation is being um, performed will also have masks on. And guess what? How many people have you heard that have died because they were wearing masks in an operating room or, uh, you know, have been died because, you know, they're having breathing difficulty or whatever? So ma wearing a mask does not kill people. It doesn't. And, you know, so if you have a fear that if you're wearing your mask, yeah, is it difficult for some people to breed? Sure it is. Is it going to kill you? Absolutely. Um, there's been no known uh, cases. Wearing a mask is not expected to kill anyone. Um, as I said, so many healthcare providers and so many people have masks uh, from time immortality. Now, wearing a mask is not expected to kill you or anyone. Um, in fact, in China, so many people were wearing masks in China before there was a pandemic, or, or not just China, but other part of the world where people wear masks all the time before there was a pandemic. So wearing masks is not something that is going to be a danger to your health in general. So just be aware of that and know that you are doing yourself a favor in wearing a mask. You're also doing um, the, the, the world in which you live in, the population, the people in which you're on, your family, your friends, all these people, you're making a contribution to this pandemic. You will make a difference by simply wearing a mask. Now, not only is masks important in helping to curb this pandemic, we, we're, we're very familiar with, of course, social distance. The further you are from someone who is spitting out all those germs, the better and the more likely you are not to be infected by that person. So if you're six feet or more away, that is ideal. You want to be as far away from people as possible. So being in a large crowd um, is not a good thing. Whether that be a church or a political rally or wherever you are in a bar, it's generally not a good thing. You still need to maintain social distance. You still, of course, need to wash your hands. You still need to um, um, have infection control, like cleaning areas that are potentially um, contaminated. You still need to wear gloves. You still need to um, allow yourself to not be in so much crowd that um, you're, once you're tested, um, you cannot have adequate uh, contact tracing. Um, wearing a mask, contact tracing, and uh, testing are also major, major uh, key factors in helping to uh, curb this pandemic. Um, but if you're, in an, if you're involved in a situation where there's so many people that you're in contact with, then contact tracing um, may not be helpful in most cases. Or if the test comes back, you know, like weeks or several days after you've had it, then contact tracing may not be helpful. But do what you can as a citizen to help control this pandemic because um, right now the projection is for this to probably uh, be under control by sometime in late 2021. But even that itself is not guaranteed because um, I know we all have our freedom and we all love that. But if we continue to do some of the things that we're doing, 
then this pandemic is going to be with us for much longer. We're talking about a vaccine that's a whole nother story. I'm not even going to touch that at this point. I may do a video, a video on vaccine sometime in the future. Uh, should you have vaccine? Should you not have vaccine? Maybe I'll talk about that. But bear in mind that there's something that you can do to help control this because right now it is scary and you know if you don't know anyone who have been affected yet you're fortunate so many of us have had people friends relatives um, who have died or who have suffered significantly from this pandemic try not to be one person who is adding to that possibility so do your best to make this um, to make this pandemic uh, go away. I hope this video is helpful to you and I hope you get something from it. Now, at the very least, it will decrease the risk of the infection um, being spread. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to decrease the risk. We're trying to make this uh, more controllable than the situation we currently have. So bear that in mind and when you're doing that, just understand that you're doing something that is going to make a difference in not just your life but potentially other people's lives as well so i hope i hope that simplifies it in some ways you know you wearing masks other people wearing masks is a good thing you will live you're not gonna die you will live so you're not likely to become sick or die from wearing a mask or a scarf but you're likely to die from coronavirus if you don't. So I want you to get that point clearly. So let us all protect ourselves. We all can do something together to end this pandemic. I sincerely hope and that this is helpful to you in some way. I encourage you to like, share, and comment on the videos and this channel. Share it with your friend, family, or anyone. And consider subscribing. And when you do, make sure that you hit that notification bell so that you will be notified each time we release a new video, which we do every week. And also remind all of us, all of us, always remember that each of us should strive to keep a healthy mind and body. Thank you so much for watching.